Hello, everyone. Welcome to the fifth webinar of the Delaware Telehealth Learning Lab series. It's supported by the Delaware Healthcare Commission. My name is Mary Kate Brousseau. I'm a senior consultant with Health Management Associates. I actually work out of the DC office, so not too far away. Today's webinar will focus on a couple of tools and approaches to get you ready for telehealth program implementation. If you already have a telehealth program, these tools can help you to enhance or expand your current program. And for today's topics, I will present along with my colleague, colleague Dr. Ichendu. Next slide. As mentioned, this webinar is part of a series. If this is the first time you're participating in the series, you can catch up and you can access the first four webinars on the Choose Health Delaware website. Um, we're, we're still figuring out exactly how to get everything on there, but I think from what we know, the slide decks are on there from the first four webinars, and then we're figuring out how to get the recordings on there. So they're all teed up, ready to go. It's just figuring out the technical needs to make sure that it's on there. Or if you really like today's program and want to share it with colleagues, you can also share the link with your team to access, because I know not everyone can, can make it at the exact live time, so it's good to have this as reference for yourself or for your team. Go ahead, next slide. Before we start, I just want to mention that HMA does not endorse any specific telehealth vendors. We do work with certain vendors in the telehealth space, and that's just to make sure that we can work in the environment, be familiar with the environment, and because we feel that telehealth is really important for healthcare. Next slide. Here we have the whole list of webinars included in the series, including today's, which is highlighted. Some of the earlier webinars showcase various ways to use telehealth in different clinical settings using different types of modalities, such as e-consult and video visits. All of that was very exciting and hopefully piqued your interest in telehealth and got you thinking about what may be best for your organization and patients. Next slide. This just gives you an idea of all of the, the team that's been working on these webinars, and you can see myself, Mary-Kate, and Dr. Uchendu at the bottom, so we're here for today. Next slide. So again, for today, this is our agenda. It will be to discuss two tools, a readiness assessment and business plan um, to help you prepare your organization for telehealth program implementation. So I will start with some details about a readiness assessment, why it's important, some of the key components, and then Dr. Uchendu will provide some recommendations around business plan development. So if you have any Q&A, um, we welcome, I, I already kind of put a little, little message in the group chat box. Uh, you're welcome to submit any questions as we go and we can pause and address those questions. But otherwise, we also have time for Q&A at the end. Next slide. So first, the readiness assessment. Go ahead, next slide. So as I mentioned, the first webinars, it's been really great to hear about what's currently happening in Delaware, what's possible using various types of telehealth modalities and technology to provide care different ways to different populations, but what does that mean for you? How do you figure out how you can use telehealth in your practice, or as I mentioned, perhaps you're already doing telehealth, but where can you expand, or what other opportunities are there out there for you? Before you start a program, before you talk with a telehealth vendor or buy equipment, you need to figure out if you have what you need to build a successful telehealth program. And that includes if it's right for your organization at this time, and that means for you, for your staff, for your team, and of course for your patients. So one time um, we were brought on, HMA, where we were brought in to, to help an organization with their telehealth program. They had figured out a really cool way to offer telehealth services to their patients. They bought some equipment, they bought a cart, they bought tools, they bought peripherals um, to support the cart, the whole, the whole deal. And then they had a big ribbon cutting ceremony to promote the new program, get everyone excited. But then a year later, the equipment hadn't even been used. It was still in the box in a storage room and they had not even completed any telehealth visits with patients. So all that work and time and, and I didn't really have much to show after a year and after so much excitement at the beginning. So we just want to emphasize that you don't want to do this background, backwards. Make sure you have customers for what you're selling. Determine the need, the program purpose, and gather team support. So a first step to help you with this should be a readiness assessment. I'm sure many of you have heard the term readiness assessment before. Maybe you've done a, a readiness assessment in the past, whether it was formal or informal. Um, but basically in this, in this webinar, we're going to propose a basic process 
um, to kind of walk you through a readiness assessment, uh, who can be involved, um, and then how to use it to be able to strategize next step to inform your telehealth program design and evaluation, I'm sorry, eventual implementation. So first, we want to assemble a team. So go ahead to the next slide. You want to have a team to support the telehealth program and to help you assess readiness. So this is a list of team members. It's really more about roles and skill sets. You don't have to have one team member to cover each of these areas. You don't, you don't necessarily have to have seven people on your telehealth team. For example, in smaller practices, you may have fewer team members, but you still want to make sure that you have access to the information that you need. So it's, it's really about making sure that you can cover all of these areas while you're doing your readiness assessment because each of the skill sets are really important to help support and make decisions about your telehealth program. The key role is, is really the first one, uh, the telehealth program manager, and that could be the telehealth lead. It should be the individual that would be completing um, the, the readiness assessment and have responsibility for executing the telehealth program within the practice. The individual, the, the program manager, should gather input from team members who may be familiar with specific aspects of the organization, but also the, the program manager needs to have the ability to seek approval or get buy-in from leadership. So again, the, the program manager could be the executive leadership, but if that person is not, you want to make sure that the, tele, the program manager has, has the ability to access leadership to, make, to inform the assessment and also to, to make sure to make some make decisions to be able to drive the program implementation. The additional roles include getting support and input from leadership, from clinicians, from IT, from billing and reimbursement, and from referral and access. So you want people on the team that balance each other out. You want a visionary, you want the pie in the sky person, but then you also want people to be realistic or logistical. Um, you also want people who want to do the work, who support telehealth program implementation or expansion. So once you get a team together, uh, you can start thinking about where to assess your readiness. So go ahead to the next slide. At HMA, we developed a tool that includes 11 key components for telehealth readiness assessment. You can choose to do more. You can, you can think of various different ways beyond this to evaluate your readiness, but we found that these, these 11 different areas, there may be some overlap between some of them, but it's pretty comprehensive, um, a pretty comprehensive assessment if you can cover these 11 as part of your assessment. Um, so the goal behind the readiness assessment and behind these key components are to make sure that you cover all of the different elements to evaluate capacity, structure, and gather all of the information you need to inform the program design and, and program implementation. So I'm going to go through, this is just one slide that has all of the 11 listed out. On the next slides, I'm going to go through each one and just, um, just make sure that we, we cover at least a little bit. But before we do that, we have a little poll for everyone who's participating. So hopefully you're at your computer and um, we'll have a poll. Go ahead, Sam, you can launch it. It's just a couple of questions to see what everyone's doing currently with telehealth. So the first question is, do you currently have a telehealth program in place? And you can, you can just click yes or no. And then the second one is, do you have a team dedicated to telehealth program development? I already went through a little bit about all the potential roles on a team, um, but I'm just looking to see if you even have maybe even a team of one or two where you can, that's dedicated to program development. So go ahead and enter in your responses and submit, and then um, maybe we'll give you another five seconds to do that. Pretty simple questions. And then Sam, you can close it and, uh, and kind of show the results. Okay, good. Good, so we have the majority, um, almost three, three quarters, have a telehealth program in place. And then we have a majority, it might be exactly the same, that have a program team, a telehealth program development team. So again, as I mentioned before, um, this readiness assessment, it can help with program expansion or it can, it can help with ways, opportunities that maybe you're, you're, you didn't hit when you first started your telehealth program. So even those who already have programs going, I hope these, these components can help you out. So go ahead, next slide. All right, so now I'm gonna go through, briefly go through the different components of the readiness assessment. The first one is organizational readiness. 
And we think about these as having three elements. There's planning, which begins with a strategic plan, the scope, a level of understanding of what the program will entail, a definition of the problem, and a description of how the technology will help to address the problem. Then there's engagement, and that includes key, hold, key stakeholders. So hopefully, if you already have a team, then that's a first step to making sure that you're involving many of the key stakeholders. And then last, there's change management. And that addresses the impact of, that this new program will have on your existing operations. So many of you all are already in leadership positions. Um, you already know how important it is to be able to, to work through change um, and to be able to manage change and to have adaptive leadership skills to be able to support that. Then there's experience with telehealth. Does anyone at your organization have experience already with telehealth service delivery? If so, what did they think of it? Did it work for them or not? If a staff member had a bad experience before, it's really important to address and validate it with them. And, and, and also, that'll inform your program and it'll also avoid pushback from your team. You may want to take extra steps and include the person who may have had a bad experience with telehealth. You may want to include that person on your team as kind of a naysayer. Um, and that way, you can learn from what they saw as mistakes in the past with their experience with telehealth. And then last, there's the technology capacity. The telehealth program team should include members with the skills and time to evaluate and support the technology requirements. One key question that comes up over and over again, do we have the right connectivity or broadband access to support telehealth using smartphones or laptops? Is there anything we can do to improve connectivity? How do we integrate that into our budget? All right, the next three key components focus more on the assessment of work, workforce specific areas. So clinical considerations. The clinical services delivered within the telehealth program and specifically within virtual visits are expected to meet the same quality standards as an in-person visit. So some examples, um, some example questions within this component, um, you can see below. I don't need to go through all of them, but I wanted to point out the last one. I know there may be some practices in Delaware that serve patients across state lines, whether they're living or working in Philadelphia, or if they spend half their year maybe at Bethany Beach or half out of the state, you need to know, um, you need to be licensed in the place where, you're, where the patient is. So if the patient is out of state and you plan on serving them on a regular basis using telehealth, your clinicians need to be licensed in that state. When you assess your patient need and model, this is something that you should keep in mind. And again, it, it, it does tie to budget to some, in some ways as well. Relationship with specialty care providers, um, it all depends on what type of model that you plan to have, but if you, if you decide that you want to increase access to specialty care providers, you want to be able to define that relationship with the referring providers and specialty care consultants. Um, a couple of questions that you'd want to ask, have you identified which specialties would be included in the program? And then what would be the source of the specialty consultations? Would it be somebody that's internal? Would it be in the community? Would you need to develop a contract around that? And then the last one, workforce development. The telehealth program should include staff who are engaged in the process and who, and who have the time and expertise to facilitate a telehealth visit. So in order to support that, your team should allocate time and budget to support trainings and education. And it also depends on your model. You may need to hire a medical assistant or another staff member to, to support it. So all different ways to consider how telehealth program implementation or expansion could affect your overall organization and kind of business. Next slide. These three components have been touched on somewhat in either a previous webinar or it'll be touched on a little bit um, with my colleague, Dr. Uchendu, after, after I speak. Um, and then it also, we're going to have a webinar on Thursday that's more devoted to equipment selection. So I won't get too far into in any of these, but some take home messages is, are that the telehealth program should be built on a solid financial plan that is sustainable and scalable, that telehealth regulations vary by state, but you also want to be aware that there can be variety in by clinical boards, so you want to learn more about what your state medical boards think about telehealth. And then finally, there's equipment selection. Really, it's you're probably getting it already. I've talked a little bit about equipment selection, but there's a lot of work to be done prior to even thinking about equipment and vendor relationship development. And, uh, and as I mentioned, my colleagues David Bergman and Dr. Greg Vaishan will present a whole webinar on that on Thursday. It's a really important component. So stay tuned for that one on Thursday. And then finally, the last two components. I know it's a lot, uh, 11 components, but 
But once you complete this, I feel like you will have a comprehensive starting point to figure out how to do telehealth in your organization. Um, so finally, last but not least, you want to determine how you will identify and engage patients in telehealth services. That includes determining where there is a demand or an unmet need that can be solved using telehealth. You wanna make sure that telehealth is a solution here. It also includes marketing your services, both externally through social media, flyers, but also internally, using your team, front desk, patient intake, doing an in-person visit and at checkout. All of those are different places to market it to, your, to patients. And then, of course, you want to make sure that your program is successful. So you want to figure out an evaluation and outcome measurement plan to figure out if your program's working. Are you improving access and cost and overall satisfaction? Since telehealth is still relatively new, the evidence base is still growing. There is some out there, um, but it's definitely still growing. And there are not a lot of officially endorsed measures for telehealth program evaluation, but I wanted to call out the National Quality Forum. They did a telehealth measure framework, which includes recommended domains for program monitoring. So uh, I would definitely, they, they published a paper about it, um, but if you just Google National Quality Forum telehealth measure framework, you can see some of the work that they did and the input they got on different measures. All right, next slide. So one more polling question, you can go ahead. Have you identified a priority patient population that would benefit from telehealth services? Kind of relates to the very, the second to last component, just seeing if you, if you had a, a priority patient population, could be specific to a disease, it could be specific to a location or a payer. I'm just seeing if as part of your process, you identified a priority patient population. So you can close it out, Sam, and let's see what everyone said. Yes, woo, excellent. That's good to hear. I know it's usually one of the most exciting things to do, to think about where your program can be most effective in helping patients, um, but I'm glad that everyone has, has pretty much gone through that process. The only comment I'd make, as you've heard me say before, is uh, you can always expand. You can try different patient populations. Um, you can see what works with behavioral health, might work a little with um, medication management or with diabetic patients. All right, one more. Next slide. Thanks. All right, so those were all the components of the readiness assessment. So now that your team has assessed your organizational readiness within all those different components, now you need to figure out what may be missing or what follow-up work needs to be done. So I, I always recommend, and I'm just kind of a list type person, I, I know I'm a spreadsheet type person, but if you go through each of these different components with your team, you can evaluate yourself. You can say, all right, in, in, in clinician, in the clinical consideration component, uh, how do we feel about that? Do we feel like we're ready? Do we feel like we have everything that we need to, to launch the program? Or are we missing something? Is there some unanswered question that we need to follow up with? or maybe we haven't even thought about that component at all. So just going through and kind of ranking yourself and saying, I'm good at this one, this one needs a little bit more work, this one we haven't even started. If you do that with each of the components, you can, you can determine where the priority next steps are. And some of them can be pretty simple fixes. Some of them may be about expanding your broadband access or, or figuring out how the, who on the IT team needs to help with this. Um, but other ones may be more comp complicated, like outside contracts with provider organizations to improve um, specialty care access. So if you identify large barriers or need more help or information beyond your telehealth team or your practice leadership, there are resources. Uh, HMA, we're here to help you. If you have any follow-up questions, we'll have my contact information at the end and Dr. Uchendu is at the end as well. Um, but also there's the Delaware Telehealth Coalition and the Mid-Atlantic Telehealth Resource Center. So. Um, we've, we've worked with those different um, key stakeholders in past webinars. We have their contact information, um, which we can easily provide to you if you need it. But I just want to emphasize, you do have some really good resources in your area already um, beyond HMA being here to help you. But overall, once you've completed all these steps, even if you have action items, even if you have leftover to-dos that you need to, to figure out before you start your program design, at least you've started. At least you've had a comprehensive assessment to get you started or to get you 
thinking about ways to expand, um, and you can be well informed about what your organization needs to prepare to launch or expand your telehealth program. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it to my colleague, Dr. Uchendu, who will talk about a business plan development, which can build upon the readiness assessment um, just in different ways to get you ready for your program. Well, thank you, Mary Kate, for kicking us off with the detailed walkthrough of a readiness assessment for telehealth implementation. Greetings, everyone. My name is Dr. Uche Uchendu. I'm a physician principal at Health Management Associates. Thank you for joining us for the fifth webinar in our Telehealth Learning Lab series. I hope I can hold your attention for the next 25 minutes or so to discuss developing a business plan for telehealth. On slide 19, you will see what you can expect during my portion of this presentation. I'll do a quick overview of business plan in general, purpose and contents. Um, I will talk about business plan in healthcare, goals and key content, and then um, zero in on telehealth business plan, which you would hear about um, actually through um, all of its um, process and products. So on slide number 20, um, I asked the question, what is a business plan? I would like to start by exploring business plans in general before we zero in on telehealth specific business plan. I like to keep things simple, so I pulled out the dictionary definition of business plan, which is the first bullet you see. And now, um, a document setting out a business's future objectives and strategies for achieving them. Also, the Small Business Administration um, mentions that the business plan is the foundation of your business. And the options that you can use for your business plan could be the lean or traditional approach, or you can customize whatever fits um, your um, organization or team. And um, the Small Business Administration encourages you to pick the best um, business plan format that works for you. That's the insert you see on the bottom. Um, not sure how the government shutdown is impacting this, um, fed, this federal agency. Fortunately, their website is functioning, hence I could access the information. I would add that you um, choose what works for your organization. With that understanding, um, and the fact that, um, that you could be a healthcare provider, you could be a health plan, or um, any other team that, that provides healthcare um, to any population. Um, and would want to do telehealth, that you consider how your organization functions in making this choice. I will discuss this further in a moment. Um, the screenshot on the right is an example of a simple business plan by someone trying to start a toy company. The subtopics they included in this business plan are identity of the company, the problem at hand, the solution proposed by the company, the target market, information about their competition in this space, their revenue stream, what marketing activities they'll be doing, their expenses, the components of their team and key roles for the members, and the milestones. While this simple sample is based on a toy company, the subtitles contained in it are applicable to healthcare in general and telehealth in particular, which is the focus of our discussion today. On slide 21, um, I'm showing here the sections that compose a traditional business plan. The order and areas of emphasis may vary depending on who your target audience is, but ideally, these are the areas expected in a traditional business plan. So you have the executive summary, the company identity, market analysis, marketing and sales, service or product line, organization and management, the funding requests, and financial projections. The appendix is the last section, which allows you to include any attachments or supporting documents. As you may have noticed, a traditional business plan is detail-oriented and more comprehensive than the lean example I provided earlier. It is often required for funding requests or financing. If a financing organization or investor is going to put money into a venture, it makes sense that they would want to. They would want more details and pertinent business case to make the decision to fund the project. Slide 22. 
how business planning applies in healthcare. I mentioned funding earlier. The sources of funding may vary from your typical business funding. In healthcare, your target funding mechanism may be through grants, contracts, cooperative agreements, healthcare payer avenues, or your organization's budgeting avenues. In that case, you may need to make a case for how this adds value to the organization in terms of quality improvement and other parameters required by the funder. Also, your business plan will inform decision making for allocation of funds and how the pie is sliced between competing priorities. My personal experience in a large healthcare system was making a case to get funding to expand um, previously existing um, telehealth options to include primary care by adding capabilities in our rural clinics with support from our large medical staffing, medical facilities with more staff. Other uses of the business plan in healthcare include marketing to grow your client base, assessing the appetite of your organization to expand the current initiative or to start a new one. In the example of my experience, we had some behavioral health telehealth at some site, but securing the funds and approval to add primary care, including the peripherals on the tentacles for scoltation and other related equipment, set us up for more possibilities. We also built in ongoing data gathering that would inform tracking for progress and return on investment. Given the high cost of healthcare in the US, which fortunately are not, which unfortunately are not commensurate with healthcare outcomes and overall health of the nation. I want to say a few words about return on investment before leaving this slide. As you think about financial and, and reimbursement, financing and reimbursement, it is important that the telehealth program should be built on a solid financial plan that is sustainable and scalable. The return on investment should reflect an acceptable financial model as well as an understanding of the non-financial benefits. On slide 23, I'm using the example of a lean startup business plan drawn from the business model canvas by Alex Oster Walder, who is credited as one of the earliest developers of this approach to doing a business plan document. I am taking the liberty to add the healthcare-related examples in some of the subsections. The key areas in the lean startup format are shown here. Specific to our discussion on telehealth, I want to call out value proposition. Some questions to ask and answer in making the value proposition should include, do we know what we are providing, like access to care, convenience to patients and families, reduced cost of providing health care. Do we know who we are doing it for? What do our customers find valuable? Does it match their needs better or feel or met need, especially in underserved populations or regions? With that in mind, we move on to developing telehealth business plan on the next slide. Slide 24. I hope this image born out of my attempt to conceptualize the telehealth business plan helps you figure out what works for your organization or circumstance. When you mix up the content of a business plan with healthcare application of it and throw in telehealth in the mix, your result will be a telehealth business plan. The silhouette of the state of Delaware is a reminder that our effort in these Learning Lab webinar series is intended to support further penetration of telehealth in the state. So the needs and priorities in Delaware health and healthcare should be addressed in your telehealth business plan. Armed with your readiness assessment, you can develop a business plan for opportunities that might arise for funding 
and allow you for a quick deployment in that case. A business plan makes that possible. In my personal experience, being ready proved successful in getting funding for teleretinal equipment by tapping into unanticipated end of fiscal year funds from other services in the facility. I was ready with my proposal on how to help the organization make the most of the funds armed with my business plan. Slide 25. We are intentionally covering readiness assessment and business plan together in today's session. So the first square on the top, of, at the left, asks what you learned from your readiness assessment. The one beneath it asks about stakeholders with a reminder to consider all benefits and beneficiaries. In this case, the benefits to your organization as a whole or in part, as well as the beneficiaries from the standpoint of patients and their families should be in consideration um, in cash and also in kind. The square at the center of the bottom asks how you maximize the opportunities while mitigating the challenges identified in your readiness assessment. The square in the middle of the top contains a screenshot from the government-funded health resource center that shows you a quick SWOT analysis. Internal factors, external factors, actions required to mitigate. The next square to the right of, the, of that asks some very important questions. Who will pay for the telehealth implementation? How does telehealth business plan align with your organization's stra strategic plan and priorities? This alignment can be the springboard you need to make your telehealth implementation part of a bigger vehicle that is supported from the top and bound for a successful voyage. The last square in the far right at the bottom of the slide asks about making the the program sustainable, including considerations for how the funding fits into organization's budget or business line. It concludes with the important question of return on investment. So in summary for this slide, successful and cost-effective deployment of telehealth requires a good understanding of the organization and assessment of current climate. That's your readiness assessment. As you consider possible sources of payment, look at the stakeholders, internal and external. Comprehensive look at who would benefit, including individuals and organizations. Additionally, alignment with organizations' existing mission, lines of business, and strategic plans cannot be overemphasized. Slide 26. Business model for developing a telehealth business plan. This figure is taken from a February 2017 publication of the Dover Press, authored by Francis Pereira from Marshall School of Business in Los Angeles. The full paper discusses analysis and insights into telehealth business plan in the United States. For the purpose of our dialogue and the interest of time, I'm discussing this figure, which offers a good summary. The use of business model framework helps identify the value proposition of telehealth, the right revenue model, organizational structure, and the stakeholders in the telehealth ecosystem. The advisor business model is what you're um, looking at, and um, the advisor stands for V for value proposition, if you're going clockwise with me on the circle. Interface for the I, service platforms for the S, organization model for the O and resource model for the R. The circle connects the five elements of the visor model, which if you go clockwise, as I just um, um, showed, will walk you through the letters of the visor. Red boxes indicate challenges and barriers in each of the components in the model, according to the paper. And some of those include um, partnerships, project management, I won't read them to you. 
Note that what the red boxes are in your organization might differ from this author's assessment of the United States as a whole. So you can, again, do the exercise of figuring out which boxes are red for you. The green boxes represent the factors driving the need for telehealth. For instance, you notice that on value proposition on the top, um, all the items are, are green, um, especially the compelling need for telehealth. And I'm glad to notice from the poll that 100% of you had identified a population that you will be using telehealth for. That tells me you do have compelling need. Again, the overall of what's green on this figure for your organization might be different from this assessment. Moving on to slide number 27. It is a screenshot from the Telehealth Resource Center. It offers a checklist for making a business case. The Resource Center notes that what they call the business case report is sometimes called a business plan. A business case report correlates with elements of a market analysis, strategic plan, operational and management plan, financial plan, environmental scan, information from the needs analysis, and preliminary program proposal. As you can see, all of those terms ring close to what we've been discussing as content of a business plan. Hence, the items on the checklist you see on the screen um, brings up whether you have determined the approximate startup and operating cost for your telehealth program, whether you have determined how the benefit of telehealth relates to the mission of your organization and the needs of the community. So it should be a symbiotic relationship where you're meeting needs of the community and also advancing the mission of your organization. Have you identified your payer mix? Have you obtained financial commitment to sustain your telehealth services? And you know the approximate expected cost reductions um, in ways so in terms of staff satisfaction or travel um, um, costs, both on the end of the organization as well as the patient. Slide number, um, that takes me to my next slide, which is um, slide number 28. Um, this slide um, gives you a snapshot of a tool developed by Health Management Associates um, to support our, cost, our clients on this journey of making a business plan in the event that they need it. For each of these sections, we have built-in questions intended to help you tease out your content for your customized telehealth business plan. Executive summary can be compared to one-page lean option I discussed earlier. Remember the toy company example. The executive summary, however, is optional. I'll come back to it in a moment. It may be useful, depending on how your organization functions, to provide a quick snapshot for decision makers and can also be adapted for marketing your telehealth program. The other content areas are the company organization structure, service to be provided, demand or market analysis and customer client base, um, governance or leadership above your program, staffing resources, financial model and how you will sustain it, your marketing and communication plan. That, this element is what I was referring to that could actually also help you with um, marketing your program. Implement, implementation plan and timeline and uh, um, addressing risks and contingencies. I want to spend a moment to call out financial model and sustainability. How will you pay for the new line of business? The additional services? the new staff or the new facility? Is this a billable service? What is the projected gain or loss? And if it's a loss, what's the business justification for taking the loss? Describe the amount of funding needed to move forward and intended use of any capital reserves. What are the opportunities to increase revenue? And how will you sustain the program and the progress you've made? If you choose to do the executive summary, it should summarize key points of the business plan. Try to limit your executive summary to one page. The executive summary is clear, succinct, and could suffice as a standalone document. If you, start with, you should start with one or two sentences of what you hope to accomplish. 
this is the vision statement that can be used as your, if you will, elevator speech. The vision statement should be created at the earlier stage of the program development and summarizes what you hope to accomplish. It is the foundation of your business. If you remember, those words were also used by the Small Business Administration. When complete, does your executive summary answer or very briefly touch on what are you trying to accomplish and why? How do you know there is a demand or need for your service? What is your target market? How will you do this and how long will it take? That's about timeline. What are the financial implications? Do you have the right resources, staff? physical plant, IT system. Note that selecting the right tool and engaging experts along with committed leadership and clinical champions are critical elements for a comprehensive cost-efficient business plan and they set the stage for successful telehealth implementation. So to wrap up on this, on this tool, after your readiness assessment, you do a business plan, which we have beaten up quite a bit in this session. Then you secure funds and you plan to implement. Before I conclude, um, I would like to draw us back to um, the reason behind the series that we have been doing with regards to um, our webinars. And so on slide number 29, you will notice that you may have seen the slide before in webinars one and three. Um, according to our um, initial assessment and discussion um, with several people in the state of Delaware, the current state of telehealth implementation um, seems to have um, be at a lower uptake overall than it could be. And there are many opportunities and interests to engage further. Um, there's limited adoption in areas of behavioral health, follow-up, primary care, episodic visits with non-assigned providers, and then after-hours urgent care. The desired state, however, would be to increase the penetration and expand the use. Um, for instance, primary care beyond urgent care visits, including integration of telehealth modalities in medical homes. Um, use for chronic disease management, um, including care coordination, behavioral health integration, including opioid and other substance use disorders, and population health management. Um, slide 29 is, oh sorry, that was slide 29. So um, moving on to slide number 30, I invite you with this final slide to start developing your business plan for telehealth, whether you are starting afresh or expanding. Notice the shape of the butterfly because I believe that you can fly. And the backdrop of clouds is because I'm convinced the sky is the limit with what you can do with telehealth. The words intertwined in this word cloud are key words from the health management associates to I shared earlier for developing a business plan. Um, um, if you were a live audience, we would do a scavenger hunt. But since you're not, I'm asking you to enjoy the scavenger hunt by piecing the words back together from what we've talked about. I'm sure you can make out HMA2, communication plan, staffing resources, all those words ring through for elements that become part of your um, telehealth business plan. And um, of course, we'll be glad to help if you need us. Um, that concludes my prepared presentation. We have time for some questions and comments from you on today's topic, telehealth readiness assessment and developing a telehealth business plan. You can unmute yourself to talk or use the chat box to let us know your thoughts. Both uh, Mary Kate and myself will be available um, to answer your questions. And um, we have um, our supporting cast also checking out the chat box 
in case um, people choose to um, type their questions there. So while um, you're getting that, the slide you're looking at has our information, Mary Kate and myself. Um, you can reach us afterwards if you prefer, but at this time, we are open for your questions. Thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uchendu. It's Mary Kate. Just just testing it out. I'm on I'm unmuted now too. So I think I know it's probably a lot for everyone to to process, uh, just because there are so many different steps included in both the assessment and the business plan. Um, but hopefully it can help you all out as you as you whether you're expanding or you're developing a new program. Um, I don't see any questions in the chat box, but did anyone want to pipe up with any questions? Well, also, I want to say you don't have to only type if you have questions. We welcome comments. If there are, you know, um, if you have experiences you want to mention or any comments in relation to both um, aspects that we covered today, that would be great too. Yeah, good idea. Or any lessons that you want to share with the group would be great. Well, we kind of anticipated there may be questions because the content was a lot, but. I'm not sure. Maybe people were already further along than we thought. Or maybe we put everybody to sleep. Hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully everyone's grabbing some lunch over the, the, the webinar time. Um, I think we can go to the next slide at least to close out. Um, but, uh, you know, we're keeping the chat box open and we're keep, keeping the lines open. Um, and obviously, as Dr. Chen said, you have our email addresses so you can, you can follow up. Um, but just as a reminder, go ahead, go ahead, Dr. Chandu. No, that's okay. Um, I was just going to remind them that the sessions are recorded and um, the slides are being um, shared as archived on the Delaware um, website. And we um, look forward to um, having further conversations with them. Um, we have future sessions that are coming up um, January 24th, the vendor evaluation and equipment selection and then um, use cases from the field um, for which I will be online again with some voices from Delaware um, uh, that um, hopefully will connect with where people are or other questions they might have about those who are doing it and how they're going about it. So um, again, we encourage you to reach out to us by email um, or any other way you deem appropriate. HMA website also has our information. Um, and um, the series will conclude um, at the end of this month, but the, we are hoping to continue the dialogue and see um, how you implement some of these tools that we have shared with you. So please feel free to give us feedback as well. Mary Kate, do you have any adding thoughts? Nope, you covered it. Sounds good. So thank you everyone for participating today, um, and we look forward to your input. And thank you, Dr. Chandu. It was a very great session. Thank you, Mary Kate. Um, and um, I don't know that we necessarily need to, you know, we can give people back 10 minutes and um, reconvene for our next session in a couple of days. Sounds good. All right. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.